Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order at 908. I just have a few uh, statements to go through and just go through the regular procedures. So bear with me, please. Um, this electronic meeting is being held in accordance with section 238 of the Municipal Act 2001 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We have all members present. We have Lisa, member of Golden Green, member Creaser, member Quinn, member Bosworth, and Chair Alan Edwards. And staff that is present is the Development Services Director, uh, David Pink, Bryce Sharp, Caitlin Walker, Derek Hammond, and Jane and Kelly. Oh, and Lori, sorry, Lori. Oh, Ryan. oh did I miss you too, Ryan? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, public input on this July 22nd, July 21st, 2020 agenda was invited at the following email address, planning at muskokalakes.ca. Uh, the motions have been pre-populated with random movers and seconders to expedite the meeting and members shall physically raise their hand until the chair has confirmed the vote. If the vote is unclear, a verbal vote shall be recorded, and this is not considered a recorded vote. Okay, we'll just go through the regular procedures. The planner will provide an explanation of purpose of the application, the date notice was sent, and will present any submissions received. The committee will then hear from the applicant or the applicant's agent if they wish to attend. Please give me, a, please provide your name, mailing address, and postal codes for our records. The committee will hear from those in support of the application and those in opposition to the application. The committee will then hear the applicant or the applicant's agent respond to any questions. The committee will then have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant or staff. The committee will debate the application and make a decision based on information presented at this hearing. It must be noted the chair has a vote on each application and can participate in the discussion. There is a 20 day appeal period from the date of decision in the case of a minor variance application, a building permit is not available until after the appeal period and no appeal is received. When you're present at the hearing, please provide us your name and mailing address. Any presentation is limited to five minutes, unless otherwise permitted by the committee. Please note, again, the resolutions are automatically written in the positive, to assist in completing these decisions in a timely fashion, as opposed to writing out each resolution. Uh, just one last thing, please take down the pink sign that was posted advertising this meeting. I guess we'll go on to the regular agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea. And um, the adoption of the agenda. <coughs> Moved by uh, Member Green, second by Member Quinn. Be it resolved that the Committee of Adjustment agenda dated July 21st, 2020, be adopted. All those in favor? Just raise your hands. That is carried. Are there any uh, declarations of uh, pecuniary interest? And the first application. Oh, sorry, yeah. yeah. And <clears throat> next resolution is the, the uh, adoption of the minutes. Moved by Member Bombsworth, second by Member Creaser, be it resolved that the minutes dated March the 9th, 2020. Be adopted and approved as circulated. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that's carried. And the first application is B O. <laughs> 520 ml. I'll, I'll turn that over to the planner. Be Caitlin Walker. All right. Good morning, Chair Edwards, members of committee, and members of the public. The first application to be heard is consent application B05 20 ml. 
in the name of Grummet, the subject property is known municipally as 2501 Highway 141. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted consent sketch on page 35 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to create one additional lot. The proposed severed lot will contain an existing dwelling and a workshop. The proposed retained lot is vacant and no changes are proposed at this time. Please note the same application was made previously, B-57-18-ML and approved. Unfortunately, that application lapsed and a new application has now been made. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 28 days in advance and um, one submission has been received to date. We have received a submission from the Ministry of Transportation and the Ministry's comments are as follows. This is in response to the Ministry of Transportation's initial comments provided on December 11th, 2018 and February 15th, 2019 with respect to the subject application for consent to sever one new residential lot from the subject lands. As the application did not comply with the MTO's requirement for access, a site review was required and we advised as follows. The proposed severed lot has two existing entrances, one that leads to the existing dwelling and another that leads to an existing shop. This lot also has frontage on Old Perry Sound Road. While it is policy of the MTO that only one entrance is permitted per lot and that where access is available from another road, access shall be taken from the road. Due to topography constraints on the property, the MTO is prepared to allow the two existing entrances to remain on the proposed severed lot. Grading and filling works that have been undertaken with the end, within the MTO right of way adjacent to the existing entrances may require remediation. No change in the use of the entrances is permitted without further review or and approval by the MTO. With respect to the proposed retained lot, which is currently vacant, there is an existing entrance in onto Old Perry Sound Road. The MTO requires all access to the proposed retained lot to be taken from Old Perry Sound Road. A 0.3 meter reserve along the entire frontage of Highway 141 of the proposed retained lot is to be transferred to the MTO as a condition of consent. Um, requested notes, once a consent application has been granted, a new property owner will be required to obtain a new entrance permit to recognize the change in ownership of the severed lands, grading and filling works that have been undertaken within the MTO right of way adjacent to the existing entrances may require remediation. An MTO building slash land use permit will be granted, will be per required for any proposed building, structures, site alterations, including grading, septic system, wells, et cetera, located within 45 meters of the MTO highway property limit or within 180 meter radius of an intersection of the highway. New residential buildings, septic systems, et cetera, must be set back a minimum of eight meters and new wells must be set back a minimum of 30 meters from the MTO highway property limits. Furthermore, information with respect to the MTO permits can be obtained online using the MTO's highway corridor management online services online. And sincerely, Laurel Muldoon. All right. Staff have prepared a detailed report for the committee's consideration and have recommended one standard condition of consent, as well as a condition to formalize a requirement of the Ministry of Transportation for a one foot reserve abutting the retained lot in Highway 141. The effect of the one foot reserve will be to force access for the retained lot to be from Old Perry Sound Road. It is also noted that the applicant has already entered into a consent agreement with the township agreeing to access the retained lot from Old Perry Sound Road. Staff would also note that the applicant has requested a full or partial, partial refund of the application fees as the previous consent lapsed. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to, to speak? Just raise your hand, please. Oh, on the phone. It's Frank Grummet at the bottom. Yeah. Yes, it's Frank Grummet here. There's uh, nothing that I need to uh, state other than if there's any questions. Uh, 
Are there any any uh, questions from the uh, committee at this point, or we'll just wait to hear if there's anyone else wishing to speak? Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? Please raise your hand or in, indicate that you would like to speak. Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Please your hand, raise your hand or let them know. Okay, I don't see anyone else in that. So are there questions from uh, the, the members? Yes, Mr. Bones, sorry. The um, previous consent agreement did not, uh, or had a condition, I think, that was uh, required rehabilitation of the gravel pit. Um, it's unclear whether that rehabilitation has been completed or not to the satisfactory satisfaction of the uh, of the township and if it's not I think we should uh, include in the consent agreement um, the rehabilitation of that gravel pit. Uh, and Dave, can you answer that about the uh, rehabilitation? Raise his hand. I didn't hear it. Didn't hear it. Okay I, I've got it up. All right. It's allowed to go right now. Mr. Sharp said it Okay, Mr. Sharp. Thank you, Chair Edwards. I can try to uh, shed some light on that. I, I don't think that um, as part of the previous consent application that was granted by the Committee of Adjustment that we uh, imposed any requirement to rehabilitate. I think at that time it was unclear whether uh, the pit had been uh, rehabilitated and I would uh, perhaps suggest that uh, Mr. Grummet could uh, provide some, some insight into that regard. but. As part of the deliberations that were previously undertaken by the committee, um, there was no, no requirement <laughs> through a consent agreement to um, require any rehabilitation. There was a consent agreement, however, that was required in order to ensure that access to the retain lot would be from Old Perry Sound Road and not from uh, Highway 141. Uh, that was imposed as a condition of consent and that uh, condition uh, has been fulfilled. Thank you very much, Mr. Sharp. Um, is there any other uh, questions from the members? Yes. Um, the, the old application went uh, stale or, or got put back, but at whose fault or why did that happen? Uh, Mr. Sharp, can you answer that? Yes, I can. I, I believe um, there were a number of conditions that were required to be fulfilled related to servicing to the consent agreement and, and what have you. Um, the applicant did fulfill all of the required conditions except for one, and that was the condition having to do with the one foot reserve abutting Highway 141. I understand um, that there were some um, some details, some correspondence back and forth between the applicant and the MTO. Um, and unfortunately, those details just weren't able to be worked out at the 11th hour. And unfortunately, uh, the consent lapsed. So uh, just for committee's information and understanding, as you may be aware, um, conditions of consent are required to be fulfilled within one year. And in this case, that didn't happen. Yeah, I only asked because of the, the fee, you know, the request for the feedback. And I just wanted to, to know why. So I I don't know if, if that's something we assess or where that gets done, but I wanted to have some background as to why, uh, where the problem laid. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Are there any other uh, questions from the uh, committee? Yes, Mr. Barnesworth. Um, maybe I didn't make my point clear. I, I want to know whether the gravel pit has been um, rehabilitated I think the owner might be able to answer that could we um, have an answer to that uh, if it's in behind the, the old cemetery the Ellswater cemetery I'm familiar with it it basically has grown back in 
and that uh, I don't think it's been used for years, but uh, maybe Mr. Sharper, the owner can explain. Thank you. If Mr. Grummet's on the line, it might be helpful uh, to get some background from him. Yes, I'm here. Um, just to answer your question, uh, any rehabilitation was done years ago, and uh, as stated, it has grown back over. Um, we did have an assessment done um, at the time of the application originally, and uh, it was noted that um, all, uh, all slopes were uh, um, as they were. There is an um, assessment included there, and uh, I don't know whether there was any pictures, but um, any uh, rehabilitation um, ha has been completed there years ago. Thank you very much. That answers my question. Uh, yes, Member Creaser. Um, yeah, if I hadn't seen this application, I wouldn't know that there was a gravel pit there and I have a plot pretty <coughs> close to that edge of the cemetery. So I was surprised that there had been a gravel pit there. I would say it's fairly rehabilitated. That's great. Thank you. Excuse me, uh, we'll need uh, the name and address of, of the owner if we could come back on and get that for the mailing. Yes, my name's Frank Romit, uh, 1040 Boyce Road, Port Carling, POB 1J0. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, Mr. Bosenworth, yes. Uh, you're muted. Can you hear me? Oh, okay, so you can hear me. Um, it, it's just it, the, uh, it says that, that the committee is considering the approval of the current application. Staff have recommended that the requested reserve be conveyed to the NPO. Will that be part of the resolution? Yes? Yes, it is. Now, if there's anyone else wishing to speak on this application, please notify us now as I'm going to read the resolution. I'll just wait to see if there's any, any uh, questions or comments. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Moved by Member Green, second by Member Quinn, and be it resolved, consent be granted for application B0520ML from it, providing the following conditions are fulfilled. One, a registrable description deed of the separate lot, along with any required right of way, be submitted to the Secretary Treasurer, along with a registered copy of the reference plan. And two, that a 0.3 meter reserve across the entire highway. 141 frontage of the retained lot be conveyed to the Ministry of Transportation free and clear of all encumbrances and at no cost to the ministry. Uh, is there any uh, questions or uh, comments? All those in favor. And that is carried. And uh, as far as the, 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 the refund of, of the fees, uh, what's the uh, committee's uh, view on that? <laughs> Down, let's yeah. see. Down, okay. Sorry, we're not going to refund the, the fees since it's not the, uh, it was not the uh, committee's uh, fault for this uh, lapsing. Thank you very much. David, do we need reasons on this now? Uh, just the, effect, the effect of public submissions. Uh, the, okay, the effects of uh, the uh, public uh, submissions, please. Mr. 
they had a good planning report. Um, it's uh, they've met they've met the conditions and no neighbor complaints. Improvement to the entrances on the highway too. Okay, thank you very much. Now we'll go on to um, the uh, minor variance, and that's A0920 Pine Islanders, Pine Islanders Cottage Association. And a report from the planner, please. That's mine again. Um, thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-09-20 in the name of Pine Island Cottagers Association. The subject property is known municipally as 1869 Muskoka Road 118 West Unit 1. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 62 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to replace and enlarge an existing crib dock the proposed dock is two feet wider than the existing dock. The maximum number of boat slips is one boat slip for every 13 feet of frontage. In this case, the subject property has 82.5 feet of frontage and therefore six slips are permitted. The proposed number of boat slips is 10 or one slip for every 8.3 feet of frontage. The variance requested is four slips. The minimum required set side yard setback is 30 feet from the side lot line or any 100 foot straight line projection. The proposed dock is to be 25 feet from the northerly side lot line. The variance requested is five feet. The proposed dock is to be zero feet from the southerly lot line and its 100 foot projection. The variance requested is 30 feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 28 days in advance and five submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Neil Donald, the township's chief building official. The development services department has no Ontario building code objections. The second submission is from Ken Becking, the township's director of public works. The public works department has no objections. The third submission is by Douglas Holland, the township's fire prevention officer and emergency management coordinator. The emergency services department has no objections. The next submission is from Lisa Krunkel, a neighboring property owner. The letter is as follows. Dear sirs and ma'ams, as the owner of an adjacent property, I am writing this letter to confirm that I have review, reviewed the application for minor variance made by Pine Island Cottagers Association Incorporated, A-09-20. I support what the association is trying to do and I have no issues with the proposed plans for the dock replacement, the variance required, uh, and the variance required as outlined in the application, Lisa Krunkel. The last submission is from Robert McLaughlin, an adjacent property owner. The letter is as follows. To whom it may concern, as the adjacent property owner to the Pine Island launch, we are the property most affected by this application by the Pine Island Cottager Cottagers Association for a minor variance on its docks. We are in full support of this application. We see it as a positive move to ensure the safety of those using the docks and to enhance the waterfront. The association and its member, members are good stewards of the lake and neighbors for the Touchstone Resort, and we are in full support of having this application approved. Thank you, Robert McLaughlin. Staff have prepared a detailed report for the committee's consideration and have no objections. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Walker. Is the applicant, applicant's agent uh, wishing to speak on this? The agent's here. We'll bring him in. Okay, thank you. Sorry, uh, Grant Cleveland, representing uh, Pine Island Association uh, uh, from Fitzmaurice Brothers, uh, 21 Armstrong Street, uh, Bracebridge, P1L1C1. 
I'm here to answer any questions you guys may have. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is there anyone else wishing uh, to, to uh, speak in support of this application? And then I will ask, is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Are there questions from the members? Yes, Mr. Bonsworth. Chair Edward, the uh, staff has suggested some planting. Uh, there wasn't a very clear picture of the waterfront where the where the docks are located. And, can you uh, speak up a little? Uh, we can hardly hear you. The, um, the staff suggested some plantings, although that would be difficult given the size of the parking area. But I was wondering what the owners would feel about some plantings along the shoreline. Uh, in the spaces where where the dock does doesn't uh, come on the doesn't come onto the land, this might improve the view from the water. Although I couldn't tell from the picture pictures whether they, they, there is growth along the shoreline as per our bylaw. Um, and that could somebody answer that uh, uh, and that regarding the uh, plantings, though it's. Uh... And that being a landing is very, very difficult. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think as long as it didn't obstruct the um, access to the docks themselves and also the parking area, um, that, that, you know, would be considered acceptable. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Way, I think given that it's a parking lot view of parked cars from the shores, it would be nice to have that screened by some um, some natural vegetation, which might include some trees. But the rest of the committee it, agrees with that, that perhaps we can ask that to be included. Is there any, anyone else on the uh, committee feels that should be done? Just hold your hand up. That's two. Any other uh, comments on, on this? Um, I think there's, there's just the uh, two, and um, since the neighbors are all in, in, in actual support of this, uh, I don't think we have to, to bring it forward, but I'll um, ask uh, Member Creaser or Member Quinn what your thoughts are. <coughs> Um, I think it's a it's a landing. I think they run a very good, clean place. I think that uh, the plantings, uh, maybe there'll be a, a place for leaves. It, it, they run clean. They run small boats. I think they got great neighbor support. Um, I'm happy to to give them their dockage for safety and get a few more boats because I think that it's a really respectful group at Pine Island. And I, I don't think we need to ask for plantings. Thank you. Member Creaser. Um, I would love to see more plantings here. I think, I don't know that we need to impose a, a site plan on them. If the owner was willing to just add in some bushes and stuff, I'm not looking, I don't think trees are useful, but you could put in some bushes and stuff that would just soften things a bit and not avoid, avoid of, you know, interfering with the docks, but I don't really want to impose it as a condition. Thank you. Um, Lastly, owner then, if we do not put site plan control on this, as for uh, planning, and that, could you do a little bit of planning? I'll definitely take it forward to the, uh, the association, and I'm sure they'd be happy to, uh, to oblige. All right, thank you very much. And I'll ask one more time, is there anyone online or uh, on the Zoom meeting that would like to speak to this application? 
before I read the resolution. There's someone in the waiting room on the phone. We don't know who they are. Could you ask them to identify themselves? Uh, could the person in the waiting room on the phone uh, identify themselves? Are they speaking for this application or another one? Mm -hmm. Hi, no, I'm on the next application. I just oh. logged in on okay. my phone because my yeah, video. No, that's working. fine. We just want to make sure because, um, and that this is a little different meeting, and we're just trying to make sure that everyone gets their say. So thank you. Fair enough. Okay, and I'll read the resolution. Moved by Member Creaser, second by Member Bottomsworth. Be it resolved that application A0920, Pine Island Cottages Association, Inc., to permit the replacement and enlargement of an existing crib dock, which will permit 10 boat slips to be located 25 feet from the northerly side lot line and zero feet from the southerly lot line as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision is hereby approved. This approval shall remain in, in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that is carried. And uh, we need some reasons. Uh, put down uh, support from the neighbors. Good planning report. Uh, Rob, could you turn your sound up a little bit or, or speak right in, in, in uh, to the mic when you speak? We're having trouble hearing you. Thank you. And the next application is A1020 Hutton. And I'll turn that over to the planner, Ms. Walker. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-10-20 in the name of Hutton. The subject property is known municipally as 1254 Burlockin Road, Unit 26. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plans on page 75 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to construct in addition to their existing dwelling. The subject property is located on a category one lake, Lake Muskoka. The maximum permitted coverage of buildings on the lot within 200 feet from the high water mark is 10%. In this case, the lot area within 200 feet from the high water mark is 19,173 square feet. The maximum coverage permitted is 1,917 square feet. The coverage of the existing and proposed buildings within 200 feet from the high water mark is 2,111 square feet or 11%. The variance requested is 194 square feet over what is permitted or 1%. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 28 days in advance and three submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Neil Donald, the township's chief building official. The Development Services Department has no Ontario Building Code objections. The second submission is by Ken Becking, the township's director of public works. The public works department has no objections. The third submission is by Douglas Holland, the township's fire prevention officer and emergency management coordinator. The emergency services department has no objections. Uh, staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objections. Um, staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Watson. <coughs> Excuse me. Is the applicant or applicant's agent uh, wishing to, to comment on this application? Um, Christy McKechnie, I am agent for Joe and Jenny Hutton, property owners, and no, I don't, uh, I don't have anything to add to this. I think it's sort of straightforward. It's a very uh, difficult lot, um, the shape and size, but to be able to maintain what we need to do. Can we please have your name and mailing address? 
Oh, of course. I'm sorry. Christy. Yep. Christy McKechnie. Um, I'm box number 570. And that's in Washago. L0K2B0. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else waiting to speak in support of this application? Please uh, notify us by raising your hand or speaking on the phone. Is there anybody waiting in, in the queue? Um, is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? The questions from the members. Saying none, none, I will read the application. <coughs> the resolution is moved by uh, Member Quinn, second by Member Green. Be it resolved that application A1020 Hutton to permit the construction of addition to an existing dwelling, which will result in a lot coverage of 2,111 square feet or 11% of the lot area within 200 feet of the high water mark, as shown on a plan attached to the notice of decision is hereby approved. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions, any comments? All those in favor. And that is Carrie. Thank you very much. And we have some uh, some reasons. Anyone? Uh, for me, I think it. I don't think that it was very. Um, you know, the, the, where the building itself, the addition is going, I didn't think that it was too uh, impactful. Like I felt like it was an area that's already um, there. So I didn't feel that it would have too big an environmental impact. No, no negative comments from neighbors, no objections from neighbors. Uh, and a good and a good reason for uh, a good reason for asking for a variation, a variance. Good. And the next application is A fifteen twenty Chalmers. Ms. Walker. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A dash fifteen dash twenty in the name of Chambers. The subject property is known as 1290 Peninsula Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan and drawings beginning on page 91 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to construct two dock extensions to their existing docks. The maximum permitted length of a dock is 66 feet. The dock is proposed to increase in length and will extend 73 feet from the high water mark. The variance requested is seven feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 28 days in advance and three submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Neil Donald, the township's chief building official. The Development Services Department has no Ontario Building Code objections. The second submission is by Ken Becking, the township's director of public works. The public works department has no objections. The third submission is by Douglas Holland, the township's fire prevention officer and emergency management coordinator. The emergency services department has no objections. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objections. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Water. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Anyone? Okay, and the owner? Hello? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Chair, committee members, uh, the applicant Scott Chambers, and uh, the address 1290 Peninsula Road, POB1JO. Um, I have uh, 
If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. <coughs> okay, thank you. We'll just hold on that. And is there anyone else wishing to, to speak in support of this application? Would there be anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Okay, are there questions from the members? No, no questions? Okay, that's fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Moved by Mr. Bosenworth, second by Member Creaser, be it resolved that application A1520 chambers to permit the construction of two dock extensions, which will extend 73 feet from the high water mark as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision is hereby approved. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that is carried. And uh, reasons. Anyone? Yes. Uh, Lisa? I think for me, uh, although, you know, it's a dock extension, I feel like it's a safe uh, dock extension because maybe it's just me, but coming into Sandfield, I think the majority of people are coming from a different direction and just the way the land works. Um, I don't feel it's unsafe for boaters coming into Sandfield. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. And the next application is A2320 Harris. Mr. Sharp. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Chair Edwards, can you hear me okay? Yep, fine. Okay, thanks. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-23-20 in the name of Harris. The subject property is known municipally as 1101 Hummingbird Lane, unit number six. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plans on pages 104 and 105 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to demolish an existing single story boathouse and proposes to construct a new larger single story boathouse on an existing dock. The minimum required side yard setback is 18 feet. The proposed boathouse is to be 15 feet from the westerly side lot line projection. The requested relief from the side yard setback requirement is three feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 28 days in advance and three submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Neil Donald, the township's chief building official. Mr. Donald has no Ontario building code objections. The second submission is by Ken Becking, the township's director of public works and Mr. Becking also has no objections. And the third submission is by Douglas Holland, the township's fire prevention officer and emergency management coordinator. And Mr. Holland also has no objections. I have prepared a detailed planning report for committee's consideration. Uh, staff have no objections. Uh, I have no further comments at this time and I'd be happy to answer any questions that committee may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sharp. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Okay. Okay, go ahead. Yes, Mr. Harris. Um, thank you for hearing our application. I, I make one note uh, from Mr. Uh, Sharps. Um, advice, our, our actual municipal address is 1107, Hummingbird Lane, not 1101, uh, number six. Uh, happy to answer any questions and appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any other uh, person wishing to speak in support of this application? Hold on one. Is there anyone else to wish to, uh, to speak in opposition to this application? Questions? 
questions from the members? Seeing none. Just a comment, uh, Mr. Yes. Chair. Um, I, this to me seems to be a very reasonable application. The, the house is obviously very small and must be very hard to use it. Um, so I'm fully in support of this. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Moved by Mr. B Mr. Bosworth, second by uh, Member Quinn, be it resolved that application A2320 Harris to permit the construction of a new boathouse 15 feet from the westerly lot line as shown on a plan attached to the notice of decision is hereby approved. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Anyone opposed? You're opposed? Sharon? No, just... Pardon? I think she was late with getting her hand. Or just late getting you're, you're okay with it? Okay, that is carried. And the reasons. It's minor in nature. Okay. No paper complaints. Thank you. And uh, now we're just down to there's no correspondence, no unfinished business, uh, information items. Uh, would that be Mr. Pink? Okay, so the first information item is related to a minor variance application. Uh, committee may recall that minor variance application A-50-19 in the name of Men's and Archer was defeated in October 2019. In summary, the applicant sought relief from front and side yard setback requirements in order to legalize um, or recognize rather a, uh, an as-built gazebo. Uh, committee was largely concerned with uh, impacts to an abutting neighbor and the applicants appealed uh, committee's decision. The local planning appeal tribunal informed the planning department uh, in May of this year that the appeal has been withdrawn by the applicants and committee's decision to defeat the variances is binding. So that appeal uh, will no longer be going forward uh, to the LPAT. Um, the second information item is relating- Bryce? Oh, sure. Was, was that the one on uh, Royal, in Royal Muskoka Island? That is correct, yep. Thank you. Uh, the as-built gazebo was about three feet, I believe, from the uh, from the one side lot line. I remember it well. Okay. The second information item is. It wasn't actually. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> it wasn't actually a gazebo, right? <laughs> it had a back wall. Yes, I believe it had two walls. It had uh, uh, one wall on the side and one on the back as well. Is there any other uh, uh, discussion that, uh, that should occur in relation to that or can I move on to the next item? Okay, great. The second information item is related to uh, an ongoing uh, consent and zoning bylaw amendment applications. Uh, staff wish to inform committee that consent applications B slash 57 dash 60 17 ML and zoning bylaw amendment application ZBA dash 50 slash 17 in the name of D Ascendis have been appealed to the local planning appeal tribunal. Um, I believe Chair Edwards would be the only member with any involvement uh, in these applications. They were actually submitted um, and heard by uh, the previous um, committee of adjustment and council. In summary, the applicants proposed to create two additional lots on Ricketts Lake, along with a number of zoning bylaw exemptions to formalize the proposed severance. The subject lands are accessed via pr a private road from Lake Joseph Road, which is a provincial highway. The Ministry of Transportation submitted a comment indicating that a private road entrance permit must be issued to a separate landowner abutting Lake Joseph Road. This is required to, uh, to formalize um, access for the new lots that are proposed. The applications were adjourned in part for the applicants to confirm how the new lots would be accessed and for them to work with that landowner and the MTO to, to confirm access. Under the Planning Act, applications may be appealed if decisions are not made within 90 days of deeming them complete. 
Uh, so the applicants have uh, appealed these applications. They will be going forward to the LPAT. Um, and as I said, the applications have been ongoing since 2017. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Mr. Sharp. That is one thing if we um, do defer any motions from now on, anything, we'll have to put a time limit on so they must come back within that, that uh, time frame so they, 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 they don't get a buy to uh, go to uh, LPAP on, uh, uh, on a no decision. So we'll have to, to, to put that in. Anything that's actually deferred, we will uh, put on it. Uh, how many days, uh, Mr. Sharp, and that, would, would 90 days be sufficient? 90 days would be the requirement under the Planning Act. So if committee was looking to go that route, they may wish to uh, impose a, a, a stricter timeline. I'd look to Mr. Pink um, if he had any uh, suggestions or ideas or thoughts about uh, how uh, one might go about doing that. All right, thank you. Morning, uh, committee. Uh, my recommendation would be to deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis. Each deferral will be unique. Some can be very quickly addressed. Others may take uh, many months. So it depends on the matter and what information you're looking for. Um, and uh, I, I would leave it uh, open at this time. Thank you very much, Mr. Pink. Um, and that is just about everything, I believe. There's nothing else to add? Um, we'll leave the decision slides. So I'll, I'll email people. Uh, yeah, maybe if, if you could let everyone know uh, the August meeting should be regularly scheduled. Uh, date. Uh, we'll probably go with a full slate of 10 applications. Um, okay, uh, in August, we should be going with a full, full slate. Uh, at that time, uh, we can get everything signed. That has uh, to be signed. Signed before that. Okay, we signed before that. Uh, how do you want to handle that, Andrew? I think I'll send out an email to everyone and let this know. Call us before you get here, or whatever. Yeah, that's fine. I'll send out an email later today. Use your microphone. Oh, sorry. Well, committee, uh, what uh, Secretary Treasurer Glazer was referring to, if you could turn your microphone off, Alan, there's a lot of echo. I think the actual speaker. Uh, under the Planning Act, all the decisions of today need to be actually signed uh, by the members. So Andrew will be in touch with each of you by email. Uh, Hopefully you're all uh, local and able to come in in the next short period of time to uh, to sign those resolutions and we can coordinate at appropriate time and a safe way to do so. Uh, and I think I just uh, mentioned, I think today's meeting went quite well. Congratulations on the first digital meeting uh, of the Committee of Adjustment of the Township of Muskoka Lakes. Uh, we kept the agenda fairly light, only five applicants. Uh, it was a bit of a trial run, but I think if everyone agrees I think it went fairly well, and uh, and the hope is for the regularly scheduled August date to have a regular full slate. Uh, I believe it's August 10th yeah. um, to have a full slate of applications, unless I hear some vehement objections to that. Uh, I think we will get the notices out shortly uh, uh, for the uh, regular slate of applications in August. Question, D David, is there a large backlog? David, is there a large backlog? Rob, I can help you with that one. Yes, Rob. Uh, there isn't a huge backlog. Um, I believe within, you know, typically there's always a three month backlog, but I think in two months we'll probably come up right back up. It, 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 I, I, the only reason I ask is if, if some, as long as I've been on the committee, we've never gone past noon. Um, in fact, we've often finished before 11 uh, with a full slate. Uh, and so if there was a backlog, I'd be willing to do more than 10 if you want, if that, if you thought that was important. Uh, 
for our, you know for yeah. business and our happiness of our they of were our we barely even owners. to get 10 out um we struggled to get 10 on so it will be um very well a larger task and i think the other thing too is that we're taking the next round of applications as the order that they were submitted and deemed complete so this last batch that we just went through um and we kind of cherry picked some of the easy ones you did we are going to have some applications that they're going to have a large amount of opposition and a number of people that wish to speak the meeting could get Very a lot well. more complicated and take a lot longer for example the planning committee um earlier had their first digital meeting we had two applications and it took almost three hours to deal with those two applications so you never know what the type of application and the type of discussion fair enough thank you very much mr sharp i appreciate that um i'd like to um and that congratulate everyone for for doing our first uh, zoom meeting i think it was very successful um it takes just a little bit longer waiting to make sure that everyone has their, their, their uh, voice set and uh, unfortunately i um with my iPad, I can only see uh, just six at a time. So um, it makes it a little difficult, but hopefully we can get that uh, actually remedied. But um, anyway, I will read the last uh, motion. Chair sure, Edwards, and I was just say I, I thought you did a great job and we should now call you Dr. Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, moved by Member Creaser, second by Member Green, be it resolved that the meeting adjourn at 10.03. And uh, all those in favor. And that's carried. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And uh, you hopefully too. we can. Thank you all. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. See you soon, Andrea. <laughs> Jane, before you shut, uh, you can you can turn everything off. But Jane, could you leave the Zoom on for a minute? I've got to sit all I can. Yeah.